I can just plug my brain back in. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to start? Yes, yeah, nice. okay. okay. Hello everyone. Hi everyone. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Pony Podcast. 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 Anyway, yes. <laughs> we quickly introduce it. Yes, so if you everyone knows who we're actually talking to. <laughs> Today we have Cameron Beer, Sam Roberts. Kirsten Wing, Richard Raygood, Caroline Moore, Alice and Sarah Oppenheimer, Sophie Hall, uh, Harriet Upton. Yeah, no, call, call me welcome. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> so, move on to the questions that we ask everyone mm-hmm. now. What's one thing you wish you'd learnt sooner? To be better. Okay. Yeah. Just fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just like everybody. You, you want to be better. Mm-hmm. You want to learn more. You want to know more. You want, you want. You don't. You you want to be better tomorrow than you were today, and you want to always striving to to try and and to do a better job because there's not not only riding but in management, looking after them, um, every, every aspect of everything. But I'm like I say, I'm kind of self governed because mm. I'm self employed. Um, but I always want to be better, so probably probably being better and and when you know, when I was younger, I was all about like a lot of the young people you know I've got to be successful but mm. as you get older you just realise that success is probably well Lucinda Green once said didn't she success is a destination not a journey no the other way around journey Su- not a destination that's it yeah. that one yeah. <laughs> success is a journey not a destination that's and I probably always thought that, oh once I've won this or once I've won that yeah. or once I've won oh it's ten times then I'll be successful but it's a lot more effort than that. <laughs> you're still the same person still mm-hmm. like still manage to get on some days and realise that your reins are crossed or still smack yourself in the face with a, gr- with a girl you know? I've done that doing a doing a nose band doing yep. a nose band when it's just been cleaned with like slightly greasy gloves yep straight, straight in the face just yep. punch yourself in the straight oh yes. still full of breakers oh, wow. just the same even yeah. if you yeah they don't care they, <laughs> they don't care what you've love to make me grounded those ones they don't care what you've won and then them so um, yeah prob- probably probably that that you know it, it's about it's about hard work, mm. self-satisfaction. Mm. What is one thing you wish you'd learn sooner? Um, if you had, this is a big one from me right now because okay. this is something I have learned <laughs> this year, and this, and I cannot stress it enough. If you hang this, if you this is what I was saying, if you hang around with nine negative people, you're going to become the tenth. Yeah. Yes. So Probably, surround yeah. yourself with positive people because I swear on my life, and mm. it's proved me this season. If you surround yourself with people that genuinely believe in you and genuinely happy for your success, yeah. you will do a hundred times better, mm. and you'll be happier in life. Like, it's just, it is just the way it is. I, I, I've been around a lot of negative people, and it had such a bad effect on me. That's such a good one. Yeah, <laughs> that's such a good one. Yeah. So you are what you surround yourself with. You are yeah. how you surround yourself with. You really are, and it's sometimes you have. If you, if that means sometimes hanging around with someone a bit less, yeah. then that's kind of life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you've got to do what is good for you. Yeah, and it's so it is so true. Like I, like I've not found it that recently, but like move. So I moved. I didn't move schools like in the middle of years, but like every time I got to like after GCSEs, I went to a different college, and after college, like I went to a different. I went to university where like I didn't know anyone, and every time I've moved, like the people I've kept up with, I've not missed the people I haven't. You know, yeah. like and I have just felt so much happier. Like not having them in my life yeah. like god if any of them are listening you're great we still talk <laughs> wonderful but like yeah I've, the people I don't talk to anymore like I just yeah. I don't and it is like you wake up one day and you're like oh my god I haven't spoken to that person in three years but you're okay with it yeah yeah. <laughs> you kind of don't know no, you do and I think like each friend like I've got an amazing yeah. selection of friends around me now but they all <coughs> do something totally different mm. but they're all really positive yeah you know, I've got non-horsey friends, which are so great when you just actually so don't want to talk about horses. Yeah. And I've got the horsey ones that I literally go to and like, I don't know what to do about this. And then, yeah. then like, you kind of, you know, get ideas going around and it, it's so important. And I think I have a great family, positive family who are into fitness. So that really helps. Yeah. <laughs> what is one thing that you wish you had learned sooner? 
I wish I had learned dressage sooner. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I sort of loved jumping as a kid and sort of went, oh, who, who cares about dressage? And then probably wasn't until I was about 18 where I went, oh, it's actually quite an important <laughs> phase, isn't it? But that's a horsey thing I wish I'd learned sooner. Otherwise, I probably wish I'd learned to dance sooner. So I don't know like such an idiot yeah. on nights out. <laughs> when I'm out with my friends. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think dancing is a key thing to have. And I think it teaches you coordination as well. And I think Did they not I'm, cover that as part of your drama degree? Yeah. Some form of stage skills? Yeah, they tried to. It just wasn't for me. <laughs> I'm, I'm born with two left feet. So. <laughs> just you learned it sooner? Does that mean you'd be taking secret salsa classes or something? Oh, maybe I have. <laughs> the tango's for me. Do you think that talent is real? and how much of an impact do you think it has on an individual's uh, mm. progression in the sport? It's a very interesting question. I think um, you, you see riders and you, you notice natural flair yeah. and ability and you see riders that you notice that are going to have to put a little bit more effort into mm. what they do. Um, my big belief is work, work ethic. Yeah. So, I, I mean, there's a saying that is, I think, goes something like, um, hard work will always beat talent yeah. if talent refuses to work. And that, yeah. that's out and out. Um, so I see a, a lot of the, the sort of 15, 16, 17, yeah. 18 year old riders um, and ones that just want to work, work, work. Yeah. And they, doesn't matter what they're sat on, they train their horses yeah. to be really good. And yeah. then you get some very skillful, naturally abilitated yeah. riders that actually aren't into taking anything on. Yeah. I think talents are, again, it's something that's um, put into a rider's yeah. mind very early on. I, again, see quite a lot of pony riders that have come through mm. the system that may have done very well yeah. at ponies and meddled um, and or been on squads. So when they come into the, the junior programme, they already think that, um, that it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, and um, the, the difficulty is is getting their mindset to be challenging yeah. again because sometimes they are frightened to um, to challenge themselves it, yeah. yes because it, in case it goes wrong yeah so it, it's all about getting them to mm. to recognize it's such a mental sport isn't it oh, very much so yeah. yes yes yeah yeah what's one piece of kit that you couldn't live without Oh, I'm an absolute brat. So I'm gonna say <laughs> I'm gonna say something that probably shock most people is uh, my bits. Really? Yeah. So I'm not a dressage blingy person, but my bits yeah. are my go-to. They're the one thing that I am not prepared to compromise on at all. So I ride with um, bombers bits. They yeah. it's sweet iron. Yeah. So it's much more comfortable for the horse and um, they bend the bits to fit the horse and then mould them to the horse's yeah. mouths. Um, and I think... Do they do them like bespoke for your horse? They do them. So, yeah, oh, wow. so every set I've had done, they do custom. Um, and they're just such nice people. But for me, I can feel the difference. Mm, and really? to the point where if I ride somebody else's horse, I often ask to put my own bits yeah. in. Wow. Because I really would prefer to have something that's really soft yeah. and really fitted for that mm. horse. So for me, don't take my bits away. I need yeah. my bits. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say my bits are like a piece of kit I couldn't live without, but I know my horse, if you put her in just a regular, like a regular mouthpiece, she will literally stand on the yard with her mouth open and yeah. hold it open and will not shut it. <laughs> I don't think we understand. I think we get, we're really good at saddle fitting. Yeah. I mm. think we understand a lot about how saddles affect the horse's yeah. body. Um, I don't think we're quite at the point where we understand just as how much effect we can have with the horse's bit. And yeah. for me, yeah, the, the legs and the saddles are important mm. big time, but there's a softness. The horse's mouth is like velvet. Yeah. You know, there's a softness that comes with the bit and like being able to respect that, mm. even on a strong horse, yeah. being able to respect that relationship because it's your communication yeah. um, is really important. Mm. Having seen many riders come to the ranks and being involved at um, major competitions, do you think that talent is real? And what bearing do you think it has on an individual's success in sport? Now, this is one of my favourites. So, this is one we try to ask to everyone. <laughs> okay, so... This was my question. Say again? This was one of my questions. Okay, that's a good, really good question. So, you've got to, so I'm going to put this back to you in a slightly different way, okay? Okay. Okay. Talent versus character. Mm. Okay? So, you only need enough talent 
to get the job done. Mm. Happy with it? Yeah. So if a fence is three foot high, you've only got to jump it to clear it by two inches. Yeah. If the fence is four foot high, clear it by two inches. If the fence is five foot high, clear it by two inches. Mm. If you look at Mickey Young um, in Rio, mm. his dressage marks were basically sevens and 7.5s yeah. from beginning to end. Didn't drop below that. So on that the particular horse on Sam, mm. at that moment in that horse's career, it had enough to get the job done. Mm. Happy with that? Yeah. So that's talent. Yeah. yeah. Then, I'm going to come back to talent in a second. Okay. So then, character. Whether it's the equine athlete or the human athlete, so the horse or the rider, it's having a character on the field of play mm. when under pressure to perform to your maximum. Yeah. And if you were to ask me which I would rather have or which is most important character every time. And I put this to people as well, is when you <clears throat> drive home from a, an event, you can have a lorry load in the back and you'll be driving up the motorway and you'll have one horse that's super talented, but often they get they over mm. jump a bit or they're a little bit hot in the head. Mm. But you know they've got all this talent, so yeah, you're coming home and you've had them run out because the horse has over jumped a fence mm. and you've missed a turn or whatever and it's cost you a run out. Yeah. Or it's, it's got fresh in the dressage, well you know it's got great paces, you know it's got all this ability, all this talent. Yeah, you look down at the dashboard and there's another first, second or third race yeah. out from the horse in the back that doesn't always super inspire mm. but it just does what it has it's to do the job. but enjoys the job and mm. always looks for the flags looks for the way mm. doesn't massively inspire you but it has the character mm. to a be consistent and b to try its heart out for you and not <laughs> let you down yeah. mm -hmm. so that's my talent mm. versus character i would go character every time <laughs> yeah. yeah however <laughs> if you want me to give you an example where both were in abundance and that's Valegra. Yeah. Okay. So that horse had super talent mm. and it had super character. Yeah. I mean we've all seen the video of that the Carl's goddaughter riding it. Um, yeah. No, it's amazing. an amazing horse. Yeah. yeah. You can go around that arena and I've seen it trot round in the prize giving mm. for with an extended trot that you should get a twelve for. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, I've seen it then break into walk, walk out of the tunnel, mm -hmm. and as it's walked out, Charlotte dropping him to the buckle end, and mm -hmm. he's just looking for a sugar lump man. I've totally <laughs> done my bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> amazing. But that was for me that typifies super talent, super character. Yeah. it had both. What is one thing that you guys couldn't live without? That's really hard. <laughs> my truck. Your truck. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> my little truck that bums around the farm. I've, yep. I've, yeah. I've got yep, bad hips and I would not be able to live without that. Yeah. Very That's my fair. thing. Very fair. I don't know really. It would sound really cheesy but... Mine's always my phone. Which is like yeah. a terrible millennial thing to say but also <laughs> yeah. my whole life is like, yeah, so that I went I went to my exercise class the other day and I got in my car and it's like no Bluetooth connection to phone. And I was like, what? And I looked at my watch and it was like no no phone and I was like, No, I've left my phone at home <laughs> <laughs> like, a slight mild panic. Um I don't it's know, a real like probably my dog. Your dog. Yeah. He's trying to pass No, but there's there's one that I'm getting a little scratch to. <laughs> it might be this dog. No, that's fine. Oh, that's that's that's, dog. that's the daddy yeah. of Alice's dog. They have oh. featured in the podcast. That's today Stitch. As well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Breeding dogs. You're precious. As well. Dogs yes. as well as ponies. I'm trying to convince my. We've got a Labrador, and I'm trying to con convince getting a terrier as well. <laughs> they are lovely. Like they they're completely untrainable. Mm. But I wouldn't be without them. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> mum said mum said no, but last time she said no to me getting a dog, I appeared home from university with my Labrador. <laughs> 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 hasn't gone very well for her so far. What is one thing that you wish you'd learned sooner? I think it's a fantastic question. <laughs> and it's <Thanks>. done. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really good question. I think probably, and this probably sounds cliche, but it's actually, it's okay 
to have a bad day. Yeah. <laughs> I think as a person generally, I've always been a bit of a perfectionist and I think I found it quite hard when things don't go to plan. Mm. And I think that first Nations Cup with the student riders mm. for me was like a real exaggeration of that that pushed me and forced me to deal with... When things go wrong. When things go wrong, yeah. Because yeah, for me at home, you know, I've got some lovely horses, but they are difficult and they're yeah. not high level. And really we were one day eventing with them yeah. primarily. So if you have a bad day, you can, you know, you can go home yeah. and sulk about it yeah. for a week and it, you know, until you get over it. Whereas at the Nations Cup, I, you know, I had to really snap myself get it out together, of it. Yeah. yeah, and get on with it. And I think then you speak to more people and you realise like that happens to everyone. Yeah, it's fine. Like it's an animal at the end of the day. <laughs> Don't beat yourself yeah. up over it. I mean, we spent all day working. watching the cross country at badminton, watching that happen for yes. people. <laughs> exactly, and it's heartbreaking. Yeah. And you see them ride towards the line you think they've got it pitch perfect yeah. and then for whatever reason they run out the horse doesn't jump <laughs> yeah exactly and you just think actually i guess the more that happens the more you learn and if you don't have days like that you're never going to improve you're yeah. never going to get better yeah so. so we're going back to your exercises and skills what's one skill you think that team gb should work on in preparation for tokyo that's that's a very yes. I, I uh, was very naughty and read these questions on the way this morning. <laughs> this so. is one of the questions we were like, can you ask this? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it's an interesting one. I thought about it, but um, um, I think we've got um, um, more than any anything at this point. We've got a wealth of yeah, fantastic so jockeys, amazing. and and um, there, I see improvements in some of the top riders over the last um, sort of three or four years yeah. dramatically. So. Um, I would say we've we've got some some really yeah. good jockeys. Um, I was very lucky, obviously, to be out at, at Tryon yeah. um, at Weg, and I saw um, how it all worked, and they're mentally strong, yeah. and they all came together, and they all rode really, really well. Mm. However, there is, um, in my mind, a, a non mistake mm. culture or a no mistake yeah. mistake culture got yeah. to be developed in our training yeah. methods. Now, when it if you watch um, athletics and, yeah. and athletes, that, um, athletics rather, they they will often do their their PBs and um, they will make no mistakes yeah. at that top level. Um, now it's obviously difficult for us because we have a horse yeah. involved as well. Um, but I think uh, Ros, Ros won because she didn't actually yeah. make a mistake, um, yeah. whereas Ingrid made a mistake on the last yeah. fence and Tom, uh, John just yeah. got a little bit close to a yeah. vertical. It was and that Ingrid at the same time. Oh, <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Um, but um, I think um, it's about the no mistake culture yeah. for me. So um, it would be training and training to be able to do um, do it as well in training, you know, to be yeah. no mistake in training yeah. um, it, with a competitive feel. There's a real shift at the moment, I think. I mean, for so long, cross country and eventing has been the sort of sport where you just get you just get between the flags. Like, it doesn't oh, matter how it looks, you just get no, between the flags. No. And we, we need to keep that, but also there's a shift to actually, it can look nice at yes. every fence and you want it to look yeah. nice at every fence. And you Absolutely. Want, like, you need to work on it being perfect. Yes, don't get me wrong. A cross country round is um, uh, is a good round yeah. if you, it's a little bit off the seat of your pants. Yeah. However, um, I, I think it's about making sure that um, you don't say, "Oh, I just got away with that. Yeah. Forget about There's it no and move on." Go, yes, yeah. yeah. So um, I think it's a, across the dis the whole of the dis disciplines. There shouldn't be a uh, a left hind left out yeah. in the halt or yeah. there shouldn't be a, a whisker of a movement yeah. in the salute and, yeah. and that sort of thing and that that's where we can all just get better and better yeah. and better there's there's so many areas that yeah. we can improve on yeah um, and that's why the germans have been so good because they're so rigorous about all the training they were so good, were so good i'm yes. going to say were so okay. good i don't think they were so good this <laughs> last year no, <laughs> so, but yes very yeah. much so well thank you very much for talking to us Sorry to bore you. No, no, it's really interesting. But we don't know a lot about your discipline, so... Nor do I, to be honest. I've been doing it for 20 years, I still haven't got much of a clue. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. you. Let you go now. I'll put the kettle on. <laughs> so that's the end of this episode, guys. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, thank you for listening, and I hope you tune in next week for whatever we come up with <laughs> next week. Yeah. All right, bye.